What's the process for you guys in terms of getting your permits and getting this built? The permitting process is very similar to the oil and gas permitting process. We need to drill wells, production wells, and injection wells. And to do that, the first step as a California operator that you must go through is the underground injection control application process. So what we've done over the past six plus years is evaluate well logs throughout this region that, that we're permitting this project. We look at water samples and salinity of the water. It's a blessing and a curse. The great aspect of being in known oil country is there is no underground source of drinking water in this area. Every geologic formation from top to bottom that we're dealing with is contaminated with oil. California has very prolific oil reservoirs, so we're not drilling into any area that would be a potential future source or current source of drinking water or water so for this area has already have been... It's <laughs> devoid of fresh water. It, it, we get less than four inches of rain in this area, and like I said, every formation is contaminated with oil. So what better place than to develop thermal energy storage than where you, you literally cannot foul a source of drinking water because one does not exist. However, the process to get your aquifers exempted in the state of California and to get ultimately the approval to inject water back into the reservoir that it came from, we're six years into that process. And so we go through agencies such as the California Geologic Energy Management Agency, CalGEM, and the state water boards. Those two agencies have effectively been shut down by Sacramento. All that to say, they're not permitting much of anything, which really limits our ability to get this needed technology to market as quickly as possible. So the, the components that we're permitting are, like I said, the aquifer exemption and underground injection of water back into the reservoir it came from. So we're simply, we're, bringing, water we're bringing the water and oil from this formation that's 1200 feet deep. The oil gets separated out. So we're putting it back cleaner than it came out originally, no oil in it, and it's still very challenging to get that permit. This is a permit that if we were in the state of Texas, it would be days, maybe weeks. We're on six years to get this permit. Uh, so that's one of our permits. And then the other permits we need are drilling permits, we, which is great because we will, we will employ the drillers that are losing their jobs in California. We will give them that quote unquote transition work. However, we still need to permit the drilling of production and injection wells, much as you would an oil and gas operation. What we're trying to do is educate the agencies, the, the bureaucrats in Sacramento to say, hey, we're partnered with the scientists. We're partnered with three national laboratories. We're partnered with the Department of Energy. They recognize, they, those three, those three labs in the Department of Energy, recognize the dire need of energy storage in California. Would you please allow us to demonstrate this technology? So that's where we're at on a permitting front. I think we will get there, but we could have been there much quicker. I'm sure you've talked to state leaders or representatives. Absolutely. And do they like your project? I think there's... I can't put myself in their position. They're tasked with looking at hundreds or thousands of energy projects across the state and giving them the benefit of the doubt, we are a first of a kind technology. So it's difficult for folks to understand what we're doing in some respects, although I think we've casually discussed it and, and it's pretty simple to, to understand. But I think there's a fear by, a fear of the bureaucrats that are placed in these agencies to permit projects because they're fearful of losing their own job if they issue a permit. I think that's one of the, the driving factors. And I think it's easier to say no than it is to say yes for whatever reason. So we continue to get met by 
what I would say are ridiculous requests. It could be something as simple as punctuation in, in an application. It could be something as simple as stating something slightly different and, and you get your application thrown back at you and then you have to resubmit it and then that starts the clock all over again. So it's a very inefficient model how we've, we've permitted or set up the permitting regime in California. And I think we're dealing with that. I, I think we're seeing that at a federal level, there's a push by the EPA, the Department of Energy and the Bureau of Land Management to create streamlined frameworks. And, and that I, I should note, that is a bipartisan push to streamline permitting. Particularly in California, we have the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, which it doesn't matter if you're developing a housing complex or geotests, you have to do all your CEQA protocol, you have to meet that standard, which is important. We, we don't want to eliminate CEQA, but CEQA shouldn't be something that takes six years to get through, or injection permits shouldn't be something that take six years to get through when you know that there's no source of drinking water in this area. There's common sense ways to approach CEQA, and I think that's what we're starting to see federally. And I've, I've actually spoken to Democrats in California in elected positions. They also want to streamline CEQA. So I'm optimistic that we will get to a point where pragmatism will prevail, where we can look at things with protecting the environment top of mind. And, and that's effectively what we're doing. We're trying to create a clean energy system, a clean thermal energy storage mechanism, 42 days of storage with no impact to the environment. But the first step is demonstrating that it works. And so to get there, we need streamlining of these environmental reviews and permit applications. Batteries themselves are very toxic too. It's a, it's a very risky product too. In San Diego, where I live, we've had three or four major battery fires in the past two and a half years. Moss Landing, the largest lithium battery storage facility in the world, was on fire recently for the third time. Lithium batteries, while they're neat technology for our cell phones and for potentially our vehicles, if you can afford an EV, they're not effective for grid utility scale storage. They're expensive. They're prone to fire, uh, they're prone to potentially hacking, and they're unknown in terms or, or undocumented in terms of the supply chain damages to the environment. We, it's out of sight, out of, out of mind on, on lithium production facilities down in Chile. And then that lithium product goes to China and is manufactured in a facility powered by coal. And then it's brought here on boats powered by bunker fuel. And then it's driven to its location with a diesel truck. And, and we're saying, you don't need to do any of that. All we need to do is drill a hole in the ground or holes in the ground and store the energy beneath our feet. And that's the beauty and why you see so much interest broadly in geothermal. You hear a lot about geothermal and unleashing geothermal because it's clean, it's dispatchable, and it's renewable. In our case, we, re we reheat that reservoir every day the sun is out in California, which is most days. So we're constantly able to reheat without generating any emissions.